I know Lord of the Rings Gollum is being considered the worst game of 2023, and I'm not sure if I can agree with that claim because, get this, a bad linear game is still linear. It's just like a bad haunted house, you know? It's made out of cardboard and prayers, you follow the janky path the developers laid out, and then you're done. Let's play a game called Bury You Alive, Anthony. No, I can't do that. I've got stories to write, scripts to do, people to see. A bad open world game, though, is closer to an empty desert with stale water every quarter of a mile and a sticky note from the developers that reads, It's an open world game. Make your own fun. We'll pick you up in 30 hours. This is all his fault. He tricked me into going this way. What I'm trying to say is Redfall is a worse game than Lord of the Rings. Stop me if you can. Give me a taste, blood bag. Prior to release, people struggled to explain what Redfall was. Some of this comes from the developers, Arcane Austin, but some of the blame also needs to be put on game journalists just making weird claims. Redfall is a co-op immersive sim, but it's also Left 4 Dead with vampires. But it's also Far Cry because it's open world, so what is it? Well, I'll tell you what Redfall is. In Redfall, you pick up a mission from your starting safe house. You then run from the safe house across a fairly empty open world that clearly had varying levels of care put into its construction and art design. There's this bar that I entered that was insanely detailed. You could see the sticky notes the staff left for each other near the registers. Certain bar stools were more worn than others, probably because those were the popular bar stools everybody chose when they came in for their lunch or dinner. Finding the kitchen was super easy because the place felt like a real bar and I could just go where I thought the kitchen was gonna be. And then, of course, there was the manager's office with the safe in it. It felt real and authentic. But then you go outside and you have copy and pasted houses that you can't enter. And the only thing the developers could think of to communicate to players that you can't go in is literally just removing the door handles. The door is modeled, but the handle is just gone. And look, that seems like a nitpick, but the game is riddled in weird stuff like this, weird corner cutting that is so beneath Arcane Austin. When you can enter a house or a building, it's a bit of a toss-up on what you're gonna get. Occasionally, you do get the bar I mentioned, a place that feels real due to how strong the art direction and layout of the building is. But then you'll find apartments where the wall geometry isn't correctly lined up with the floor so you can see outside, or you'll get light leak that's causing the outside sunshine to spill in through the seams and the walls and doors. There's also just like a lack of simulation to the open world itself. Things won't fall off tables, mirrors won't reflect, glass won't break, grass won't dynamically react to you, and most if not all items are bolted to the floor, which gives Redfall this look, but please don't touch, vibe that really harms the immersion factor when you're coming off another Arcane Austin game like Prey. Could you imagine how cool it would be to physically block a door with a couch from a vampire horde that's chasing you? Spray paint crucifixes on planks of wood and bolt them to windows as fortifications. The game world isn't used in an interesting way. It's just been created. It doesn't feel like Prey where the station of Talos 1 was created for the mimics and players to run around and get lost in. The map design itself doesn't feel like a gameplay mechanic like previous games from the studio. It's just this barren, occasionally cool, but often empty open world for some environment artist to put on a portfolio when they apply for a position at another studio that will better utilize their talents. And then some game designer comes in much later and sprinkles enemies in this world without much care for how the enemies navigate it, which does bring me to the enemies. Occasionally, the emptiness is broken up by, I don't know, four or so guys with guns. These guys with guns are pretty easy to kill since they don't put up much of a fight, and if you're very lucky, you may encounter a vampire or two. What are your honest opinions of Redfall? It's kind of slow. How's the combat? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Vampires primarily just run or fly at you, getting caught on geometry and generally behaving like running zombies rather than intelligent people who have been transformed into supernatural predators. I will give them some credit. The flying ones at least do teleport, but it's about as much fun as the teleporting Prometheans from 343's Halo games. Which is to say, it's not fun, it's very annoying because they're hard to track. There's also these blood bag guys who I think might be vampires that have overfed or something. They're just your generic exploding zombies, only the explosion effect is so muted and has such poor game feel that I won't blame you if you didn't know this actually hurts you when they burst. 
There's a couple more vampire types, like this slinky one that puts a crappy looking shroud effect that, weirdly enough, reminds me of the fog filter on Reshade with the way it just like clips through the ground, or the rook that everyone has memed on for his lack of threat despite the crazy buildup, or there's like these weird vampires with searchlight eyes that don't require stakes or UV rays to kill, which kind of breaks the game's own rules because other vampires you have to stake in order to kill. I don't know, man. It's really hard to talk about the AI seriously because they're so badly implemented into the game world. It's almost like I'm giving the game too much credit by even acknowledging them as something that was competently designed. They have serious trouble navigating and inhabiting the world of Redfall in a way that makes them feel real. Because the world is look but don't touch, the AI can only pathfind around pre-existing geometry, which they really struggle to do. They can't, say, hop through windows, flip over tables trying to claw at you, get caught up in wires, maybe trip and stumble, get cut off because you knocked something in a doorway, etc. You know? Just the general sandboxy chaos during fights, the kinds of experiences you can get in Prey 2017, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and so on. Combat is so boring because it really just is shoot at the guys with the health bars who are stuck in a door or stuck on geometry. The world and level design is divorced from the combat, and it makes for a very boring experience. Okay, the combat sucks. Loot-driven games like Borderlands have awful combat as well, but people play those games for the loot, right? What kind of loot does Redfall have since it's a loot-driven shooter? You can loot containers, drawers, and the like, and then convert these into scrap, which is basically, I don't know, just vampire bucks that you can spend on guns, healing goo at the safe houses, and other boring things. You can also break down guns that you find and turn that into vampire bucks. It's very easy to accumulate these vampire bucks, or V-bucks as I'll call them, because to be honest, the loot you get in this loot-driven game is awful. New guns can drop in the game world, be found in containers, or of course can be purchased with V-bucks at the main safe house. There's the usual batch of generic shotguns, assault rifles, pistols, revolvers, etc. None of them feeling particularly good to use due to some pretty poor view model animations, and in the case of the sniper rifle, it's been positioned on the screen so that it's, at least to me, distractingly facing to the left of the center of the screen. I get that most video games don't actually have guns facing the center of the screen, but this game in particular is really bad at hiding the fact that the guns just straight up aren't actually facing the crosshair. Look, if that kind of stuff doesn't bother you, it's okay, but it bothers me a lot. Look at it! The sprint animation in Redfall is also pretty poor. I'm not an animator or anything, but if I feel like Bart Simpson on a skateboard when I'm running down a hill instead of a vampire hunter hoofing it with dozens of pounds of gear on me, look, you spend a majority of the game staring at a sprint animation, and for it to look this bad? Why? Arcane Austin's animators can animate the hell out of a melee weapon. Just look at how nice the wrench in Prey 2017 felt. But the guns? The pistol of Prey 2017 didn't face the crosshair either, now that I'm remembering, and the sprint animations were so janky you could see them cycling through the keyframes. That studio really needs to get some supervisors that have experience animating guns if they want to keep using guns in their games, because this, this just ain't it, chief. It doesn't make for a fun shooting experience. There's also this weird issue with the guns themselves, which feel as though they're trying to be somewhat grounded. Like, I mean, look, it's literally just a shotgun with a red dot scope and maybe a stake on the end because, you know, vampires, which that is a neat artistic flair. But they're just 
generic guns, but then they come in this aggressively uncreative fantasy green, blue, purple, gold rarity system that every developer has been tripping over themselves to add to their game since Destiny released in 2014, regardless of if it makes sense within the game world. And for these somewhat realistic guns, it doesn't make sense for Redfall to have the Destiny loot system. Imagine if instead of spending your V-Bucks on loot and healing items at the safe houses, you could spend V-Bucks on tape, garlic oil to dip your bullets in, crucifixes to fashion into crucifix brass knuckles. The game and vibe feels way more suited towards a kind of game that has you scavenging houses for supplies and bootstrapping together anti-vampire weapons from the world rather than loot drops with this dumb, hey team, I had no clear vision for the gameplay loop so I don't know, copy Destiny or Borderlands or something. Redfall just has the stink of a game that was forced on the developer. It doesn't play to any of our game's strengths, and in fact it feels like a studio trying to create an imitation of other popular games. After Prey 2017's unfortunate failure to turn a profit, the desperation to appeal to a wide audience quickly and cheaply really can be felt in this game. Even Arcane's trademark style and charisma just isn't here. Character designs are atrocious, sporting these massive Hulk glove hands. Weird proportions on the bodies which contrast against the environment's hard, and in general, the game just has this annoying vibe. No more creepers. No more creepers. What? Typically, arcane games have a certain cool factor that comes from this almost effortless ability to craft really charismatic and well-acted characters that are really fun to see interact with the player character in an almost bungee halo kind of way. In Redfall, though, these characters range from boring to annoying. Everyone outside of, I don't know, maybe just the Doctor character have very milquetoast voices and vocal performances. Dialogue is generally on the poor side of things for Arcane Austin, coming off as very pedestrian and by the numbers. Things like the vampire cultists, who you spend most of the game shooting, don't even come off like cultists outside of the opening of the game. Vampires in traditional folklore can acquire thralls, right? People who fall under the supernatural influence of the vampire and lose their free will. Well, why aren't these cultists wearing, like, everyday outfits, police uniforms, grocery uniforms, butchers' aprons, etc.? Why don't they look like the average citizen of Redfall who dropped everything that they're doing and took up arms to defend their vampire overlords? Self-preservation and hygiene be damned. They just come across as, like, a boring, generic, bog-standard militia that I've seen in every video game ever. It's boring. It's a missed opportunity to make the theme feel a little bit stronger. Why do vampires sport none of the usual characteristics that are part of pop culture? Where are the bats? Hanging upside down in dark basements, being fended off via gameplay mechanics that involve garlic scents and oils and crucifixes. Why did this game settle on vampires and then downplay almost all the aspects of vampires attacking a small town that could have made for really fun sandboxy survival gameplay. It plays like a bad, unfinished Borderlands and lacks the creativity that I know Arcane Austin could have put into the game. If I can draw comparisons, there's an open world game called Generation Zero that, like Redfall, feels kind of like a beautiful open world that was made first and then the developers sort of much later put enemies in it without really thinking about designing a world that could drive interesting gameplay mechanics. Unlike Redfall, though, Generation Zero kept it simple. It didn't get too crazy. It's the 1980s, and you fight robots and scavenge for parts and guns to kill bigger robots with. Combat is aggressive, animation quality and art direction is tight, and the theme of the game is always in focus. It never feels distracted by other things.
Redfall is super distracted by different things. Redfall is a game about a small everyday town fighting vampires, but you're these weird Fortnite characters who don't look like they're part of this small town. One has a pet robot, and the other has a supernatural raven? You don't even fight a lot of vampires, mostly just these guys with guns who have flashlights taped to them. Also, the vampires themselves, they can control water for some reason, and also control TVs, because I guess that's a thing vampires are known for. Oh, and there's also vampires that come out during the daylight. But don't worry, we came up with a weird plot reason for why the vampires are running around in daylight. Sure, it could have been artistically cool to have a permanent nighttime setting with curated shadows, lighting, etc. But nah, all the kids love their dynamic day-night cycles, even though it adds nothing of value to the game, and kind of devalues the vampire theme. Theme. The game is weak, man. It doesn't take advantage of its core promise of vampires, and it doesn't have the charisma or powerful presentation of a typical Arcane Austin game. My suggestion, honestly, to Arcane is finish the 60 FPS patch, add a harder difficulty mode, that way the game can have at least some tension in the long run, because really, it's, it's too easy. And then honestly, move on to a new game. Make a single player game. An immersive sim Redfall reboot with Microsoft's backing and spin this disaster into maybe a triumph. I don't think Redfall is going to be the end of Arcane Austin, but I'm also not privy to their financial situation and operating costs. So my advice would be for Microsoft and Zen Zenimax to allow Arcane's next project to be a single-player immersive sim. Zenimax threw them under the bus by forcing them to name their 2017 game Prey despite it being more of a spiritual sequel to System Shock and Bioshock, and then failed to even market the game as an immersive sim. Microsoft, use your marketing arm to inform the gaming public about the immersive sim genre, why it's so cool and how it can offer a stealthy way to play games or an action-y way to play games, and can appeal to a wide audience. It's a genre anyone can enjoy. You could make headlines about how Game Pass is bringing back the immersive sim genre, and you can build a lot of hype around it. Now my next bit of advice actually goes to Arcane Austin's management, because look, publishers, shareholders, and the demands of the market can be a creative handcuff, but in the case of Redfall, it's up to you guys to not fail your team. Next time, pick a vision and realize the vision. Be crystal clear about the sort of game you want it to be early on in development. Don't fence sit during pre-production, don't draw out that pre-production by being vague and non-committal to a specific vision. Lay out your idea early on in development, get prototypes rapidly made, and make sure the team is aware of exactly what kind of game they're making. But I'm just a gamer, what do I know? Hey, if you enjoyed the review or video, consider sharing it around, even subscribing if you haven't already, because yes, I see you, you haven't subscribed yet, have you? Also, I'd love to know if you want me to do more videos like this. When I heard that Redfall was just another Xbox game that had a messy development cycle and released sort of unfinished and broken, I had to take a look, and eventually that blossomed into this video because I had opinions on it. Next, I want to talk about another game with a messy development cycle that was kind of an unfinished disaster, Battlefield 2042, and the game it eventually turned into because I have opinions on that as well. Alright guys, I got nothing else to say of value. See you on the next video.